Okay. All righty, we're going. We're here. We're ready. It's our uh, it's our Monday show. It's our pop up, uh, and uh, we're uh, saying howdy. Let's bring everybody in here. Uh, let me see here. Here we go. Here we go. Um, there we go. There's Mandy, and there's Jeff, and there's Marjorie, and there's Charlene, and there's Brian, and there's mm -hmm. Paul Eleven, and there's Edward Berger uh, uh, down there. Uh, yeah, hi, Edward. That's right. <laughs> Excuse me, I got to rub my eyes here. Excuse me. We're we're doing, we're having the worst kind of, your eyes are burning today, aren't they, Marjorie? Yeah. It's a yeah. bad allergy season. Well, on top of that, we got not only got allergies, but there's some fires up in Canada or something. Yeah. Yeah. So we're getting Canadian fires. So. Yeah. So hello to uh, hello to um, Mandy, who's hard at work again today. Yes. Cooking the books, as it were. Uh, oh, look, we're being joined by our old friend, Mr. Reynoso. Um, I don't see him. Well, you'll see him in a second. Don't get too overly anxious, Marjorie. There he hey! is. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. And, uh, of course, Paula, how are you doing? Paula had her knee operated on. Now. I have a new knee, everybody. Hello. <clears throat> a new knee? <laughs> how is it? Is it? A, can you're walking on it already? Yeah. I'm walking on it. Um, I think I'm in pretty good shape. I just got over uh, my first, uh, not my first, my second uh, PT session. And when the guy walked in, I said, I hear you're going to torture me today. And he said, well, maybe not too bad. Yeah. And it was, it's fine. I'm, I'm doing real well. Yeah. Okay. Well, they give right. drugs? Yeah. They give you drugs, says Albert. Yeah. I don't want to be on that, that stuff. Oh, really? Oh, really? What did you <laughs> <laughs> What what in the world did you go through? Then what is it? The nineties? Uh, the seventies? Uh, no, it's the sixties. If you re if you remember it, you weren't there. I'm one of the people who remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. If, if you remember it, you weren't there, or or your brain's pretty much fried from all the drugs you did back then. Oh, either either way, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I like a glass of wine, but uh, you know, like uh, it was never my thing. My, I had a, my back was like killing me or something. And, uh, and no, wait, I'm relating to drugs. Okay. Mm. And she has these drugs she takes. So she said, here, you want one of mine? I and said half. She gave me half. She gave me two halves and she gave me half and I was out of it. I was just, <laughs> I mean, they're so strong. I've never gotten high off of them. Okay, well, that's how much my body needs them. Well, probably if you if your body needs the drug, and you I don't get high, I and, have you, and you don't high. get high, that's because seriously, the you you you've never experienced that? Never. And I've been on them maybe oh. what fourteen years. I had I had a guy I knew once who was a heroin addict or had been a heroin addict, and he said that he got off heroin and all that. And then he got into a terrible accident or something. They rushed him off the hospital and they said, we want to give you morphine. He said, no, don't do that because I'm a drug addict. And they said, don't worry. You're still not going to be a drug addict because this is going to go to take care of the pain. And when it has to go to take care of the pain, it doesn't get you high. Yeah. You know, it's true. Cause I take very strong pain pills and I have never, ever gotten high from it. Never. Yeah, well, I like. Well, I, I I will say that pre-op, you know, the, the anesthesiologist gives you something. I don't know what it is, but oh, that's you don't you don't really care about anything. So oh, whatever it is, wonderful. Yeah. Slide yeah. off into yeah, nice nice afternoon. Now here we have Len Frisco, and he said he wasn't going to be able to call today because he was going to be on an airplane, but he was going to try. And he's in the there he is. On the plane. There, he's obviously he's in the on the plane. plane. It, are, are you are you in the plane or flying it? <laughs> oh, he can't. He can't. He's still he's connecting. He has. Uh, can uh, Can you hear me, Lan? Yeah. Hey, Alex. H how Hello. are you? Good. We're on an airplane. 
Yeah, obviously. We figured that out. It just crashed. <laughs> uh, I'm 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 gonna is that a virgin airway? Wait a minute. We lost Southwest. One. I keep dropping you. Oh Southwest. Oh, okay. Well, you're lucky you took off at all if you're on Southwest. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, they're good. I like them. Yeah. They're the best. Well, they've had their series of problems. And... Why did my audio why did my video stop? I, I dropped you. Probably probably you turned off the camera. The video part. <laughs> Just all you have to do is click on the camera. And well, anyway. Anyway. Trouble is, if you use an iPad, are you using or or you more? more uh, are you using an iPhone or using an iPad? No. The phone. The phone. The phone's really difficult to negotiate. Mm -hmm. You know. So. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say hi to everybody. I'll uh, join you guys hi. next week. We're getting off. Where are you okay. going? We just came back from Vegas. We're, oh. we're, in, we're in Oakland now. So how much did you leave back in Vegas? <laughs> you know, only about a hundred dollars, which is pretty good. You know, it, it, I always when I go to Vegas, I don't have a I don't have a winner's mentality. But whenever I've gone to Vegas, I say to myself, "I'm only going to lose two hundred dollars." Right now, you, that's not why you gamble, is it? You know, uh, I, I'm I, I'm going to lose. Yeah. No, you want to you want to win something big if you can, of course. Yeah, 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 but you never do. Have you ever won big? Well, he we lost him. Yes. Uh, anybody here gone to Vegas? Ever been to Vegas? Yeah, yeah. Thank Did you. you gamble there, Albert? A little bit. I don't gamble really. R really? Oh, okay. Occasionally, I'll play a couple of games, but nothing big. So, what the hell did you go to Vegas for? <laughs> because it's Vegas. Oh, Look at that. We well, can't you know, believe what it is. Marjorie won't go to Vegas. I have no desire. You got to go. Vegas. You've never been? Why? Why? I've never been. And oh, I you got to go. You got to go. Oh, you, well, you're it's crazy. You, it's just craziness. You, you oh. walk, Marjorie, you'll walk away loving it. I mean, at my age, I don't need crazy. It isn't crazy. Albert just said it's crazy. You're married. It's not, it's not crazy in that... It, it, you know, there's craziness. It's just unbelievably crazy. You look it, at well, it, I, it, I, I don't it's, like you know, I, it, it's amazing they built this thing in the desert. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and and uh it, where else can you go and see a pyramid and the Eiffel Tower? Come on. <laughs> which was the movie just where me. uh which was the movie where uh he was building the first casino? Oh, that was, that was uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 Bugsy. Bugsy. Yeah. That was a good. That was a good movie. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, oh, hello, Charlie, and hello, Scott. They've joined us, and uh, uh, you got you guys ever been to Vegas? No. 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 Neither. How, and not you, Mandy. I have. Oh, you have. Okay. Now, will you please mm -hmm. tell Marjorie what Vegas is? Did you enjoy it? Well, yeah, I went once in the nineties. Uh -huh. you know, um, with my ex-husband like for some convention he went to actually i've been three times yeah but a couple of times i went with him and then the other time i went for keller williams work and that was more recent and it's just real like i'm not a gambler either but i feel like you have to see it once it's just spectacle thing which, which one which one did you have more fun at with your husband or your friends? <laughs> well, actually, my, my ex-husband came to all three, but I'd say the last one, the latest one with Keller Williams people, that was probably the most fun. And we did the most. We went to Cirque du Soleil and all that stuff. Yeah. To... It just doesn't excite me. There's nothing it about it. It, 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 it doesn't me. matter whether it excites you now. If you're there, you're kind of amazed by it all. I don't yeah. want to even get there to see. But let me let me just. You can say, go to shows like I saw yeah. Bill Maher. I mean that I've was one. New York. I've got That's me. true. That's true. Which is Not the real? Which is the real thing? The real shows. True. Yeah. But I'm talking about like like singers and you know like celebrity singers that are like you know there all the time. In, in residence, yeah. yeah. Residence. Your buddies Penn and Teller are there, right? Alex. Penn and Teller have been there for, they've had a residency at the Rio, for, I think, for, for years. Over, over 20 years. Yeah. Over 20. They have probably had the longest residency of any of any performers. Um, and they're very good. They're very good. It's a good show. You know. Yeah. Um, 
not as good as when I first saw it. When they first started out, they were superb. You know, it's just they've been doing it over and over and over again now. And uh, but they, uh, you know, I, I just think that the only thing is, don't ever go to Vegas for more than three days. Oh yeah, no, God no. Because I've had to go there for five days when they were oh. we were working a convention. Okay, uh, and um, uh, it it after about the third day you get squirrely. Mm -hmm. just, what was that like to work a convention? There. Um, well, I was a stripper. And, <laughs> excuse me, if I'm rubbing my eyes, but it's the uh, pollen. Uh, at working, uh, it, it's fun. You know, it's working. It work, we were working. I was working for, I was you doing something for Play TV, okay, uh, for Play Incorporated. And, um, doing that kind of demonstration and so on and so forth. It's fun, really, you know, it's fun. Uh, but uh, it, it's, uh, but uh, more than three days you go, you just get squirrely after, after the fourth day I was going, can I please go home? And then, oh, you got to do one more day. Oh, okay. I'll do one more day. You know, was that for CES? Yeah, that was for CES. Yeah. 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 That's huge now says last time you went well no it was no it was huge then i think it actually is less than it was then because a lot uh, of the a lot of the uh, a lot of the people who did displaying there have decided not to any longer but ces is still a, a great show to go it's a consumer electronics show and um you know so and so uh what's happening in florida how's florida uh albert same thing. Governor and Disney are fighting. Otherwise, the same stuff. It's nothing different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say DeSantis is going to say he's going to run for president this week or something. That I think he has till Florida. Till, till well, Friday. he moved into a new office building, and because of the cost of the office building, he has to officially do it, sign the papers, and, right. and get in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, nobody's running that anybody wants. That's the funny part about it, you know? When has that not been the case? Oh, I don't know. You know, when I was younger, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, um, I voted, you know, I, I didn't think Carter was a bad idea. Well, well actually, Obama, Obama was a great idea, yeah. Obama was a terrific idea, yeah. yeah. And um, um, let me see here, who else? Now that I look back, W is a good idea. What? <laughs> looking looking back, Hitler was a good idea. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Nine? Nine. Um, but uh it, no, I mean it 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 was uh it was uh, I I think Clinton was was pretty good. You know, I wasn't he was the only president to balance the budget. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I had no problem voting for him. And uh, who was lied under oath? Then I stopped. He didn't inhale. What about a blowjob? Give me a break. Doesn't yeah. matter. You just over, over lied under oath. That's 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 not what you do. Sorry. But he didn't well, inhale. Hold on he a second. Inhale. Hold on a second. I mean, I know that you're very loyal to your wife, and that you would never think. Don't of give me this nonsense. You pull this all the time. Let me well, he's protecting his family. You want to protect your family? Then tell the truth. Because you're going to get nabbed by it anyway. You were <laughs> under oath. Tell the fucking truth. That's all you have to do. That's where he went wrong. He would have been okay other than that, but he didn't. Uh, who who was it? Well, who was the comic? It might have been Lenny Bruce years ago who said, "If your if your wife catches you cheating, deny it. Just deny it, no matter what. Just deny." It. You know, where's the virtue? Because, in that? because no, what's what's the what's the virtue in saying, OK, dear, I did cheat on you. Well, Richard Pryor said, do you believe me or your lying eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, look, I, I, I agree with you. You shouldn't have to be in a position to lie. OK, 
but we always are in positions to lie. We're human, <laughs> we're human beings. We are, we are selfish, lying. Um, uh, what else? Uh, what else? Uh, hypocritical. <laughs> um, I could probably name a bunch of how many times every one of us how many times how many times before going out with your wife somewhere has she said to you do I look okay right that's different and then she didn't look okay and you said no you look like crap tell me when you did that I would never say that (laughs) there are ways to say things diplomatically and and to be virtuous about that and there's nothing wrong with that and if if you lied you're going to get caught in a lie Mm -hmm. And I bet you if he could go back, I bet you if he could go back, he'd change that and say, yes, I did. You know, like I would think, yeah, people would have have had so much more respect for him. Yes. Even the even Republicans would have said, you know what, dude, you know, you screwed up and you came yeah, forward. Well, that, that, you admitted it. That's a stretch. I don't know about the Republicans saying it. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying the Republicans back then. <laughs> yeah. <you know, laughs> There's some that would have said the ones that had a certain moral compass. Yeah. Right. They said, hey, at least he admitted it. Everybody screws up. We're human. I, a lot of people would, I mean, that was the thing about he just, I felt like he let people down. Like we were let down because we were like, oh, what a dog you are. You know, you're just like a dog. You could have told her before he before he uh uh had to testify. He could have told because he had to tell her anyway. She must have done. I think she, she probably knew, already she knew. knew. All, right, all right. Let's oh, back okay. up here. Let's back up here. And let's be honest about what this is all about. I don't think that he was doing anything that they didn't agree he could go ahead and do if he wanted. Oh, absolutely. But that's okay. a different issue. That's a whole different issue. That, 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 yeah. that I think her, her, her position was, if you do it, don't get caught and embarrass me. Yeah. Okay. The thing she was mad about was that he embarrassed her. Yeah. All right. She would have been mad about it anyway, because he's a public figure. He had previously embarrassed her several times with other people. But this Mm -hmm. was in front of the whole Senate. This was in front Mm -hmm. of all of Congress. And he's Mm -hmm. lying about it. That's the worst thing he did. Right. Absolutely the worst thing he did. Well, I interviewed, I have told the story before, but it's worth telling you. And I interviewed Jennifer Flowers at one point. This was years ago in San Francisco, but after all of this stuff went down. And I said to her, uh, you know, we were talking and she said, well, I, you know, I had an affair with him. And she said, and I said, well, I believe you. I truly believe you. You know, so don't feel defensive about that. But let me ask you the question that's most important to me and how I'm going to feel about Bill Clinton. Did he thank you the next day? And she said, every time with flowers. Mm -hmm. And I said, then he's okay by me. You know? The thing that I think where he really screwed up was that famous clip. We were so sanctimonious. And so I did not have sex with that woman. You know, he was so preachy like how dare you accuse me that's when he if he had never done that that was one of his big well mistakes. here we go we go with the old question this one has come up a million times and we got women here to join <laughs> in on the conversation define cheating it was a cigar no wait a minute <laughs> to be you're right about that but brian neary is saying is what i was about to say he never had sex <laughs> with her in it- she got in any any physical contact okay okay well i would i would define it as as the way the supreme court defined pornography (laughs) i can't define it but i know it when i see it how's that well (laughs) that you see here's the point that that uh to begin with all he ever engaged in was oral sex And to a lot of guys ever engaged in Marjorie, if Alex gets a blowjob from somebody, (laughs) are you going to excuse that? Are you going to brush that off? Fucking sex. He he seems to think that's a nothing. He seems to think that's a handshake. Okay. Okay. Now let's let's, let's ask this question of the women. (laughs) Let's ask this question of the women. Okay. Uh, if okay, if I were to ask you how many times have you had sex? A lot. Would you include the blowjobs? No. See, that's See? the point. <laughs> that's the point. 
Anytime the it's, genitalia makes contact with another part of somebody else's body, there's sex involved. Absolutely. There's some kind of sex it's a hand job. That's a hand job sex. sex. That's it's sex. Hand job sex. Yes. It's hand job sex. Anything kind of intimate. Well, that's the way the yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> that's intimate. That to me, that's, that's like a very a personal definition. How about a kiss? How about a new Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Is a now, kiss cheating? If you just kiss somebody, does that mean you automatically got you cheated on me? You got to get divorced? No, but I mean, that's you, cheating. Okay. Things were so different back then. Like we've set the bar so low now. Well, that's what well, cries me. It was like the bar was much higher back then. So there's well, a bar now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's and where the sex and, starts. And, the it's, bar. and it's, it's, the not, bar. it's not serving drinks <laughs> either, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I mean, the thing is that uh, it, it, many years ago, a woman came to me and called the show and said, I found out my husband's been cheating on me. What should I do? And I said, you know. Up until you found him cheating on you, how was your relationship? And she says it was terrific. I said, uh, did you have sex a lot? And went, she went, yeah, no problem there. I said, then why divorce him? He he made it, he made a, a disgusting error, okay? Something that, that hurts your feelings and you know, you didn't expect out of him. But don't leave him over that if everything else is good. Right. I agree. You agree with that, see? Do you agree yes. with that, Marjorie? No. <laughs> Do you? I got Brian a question. Up. Brian's got a question. Oh, Brian. Yeah. Yes, Brian. Mm -hmm. Brian. <laughs> Brian. Hello. Hello, guys. Yes. Oh. Look at your hand. Brian. If a guy is having sex with. Well, oh, your audio is going in and out. You're going through a tunnel. Uh -oh. It's that bad. Oh, it's Max <laughs> Headroom, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, well, <laughs> going through Tracy, Tracy, California. Yeah, you're, you're breaking up. Your audio is breaking up a little bit. Wait, wait till you get down the road a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's why I don't call when I'm driving. Well, yeah, okay. okay. I'll you're say fine. my question. Oh, you're fine now. We can hear you fine. What were you going to say? Okay. If a, if a guy's having sex with you and he's thinking of another woman, is that okay? Oh. Yeah. How do you know he's gonna, what he's thinking? Yeah. 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 Ooh, that's a good one. How often so does that cheating? not happen? No, that's not, not cheating. cheating. Everybody has okay. a fantasy. That happens most of the okay. time. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just want to make sure because you know this whole touching <laughs> genitalia is cheating. It's I just want to make sure. Little fantasies. I can't remember ever having sex, so, with, having sex with a woman, and while I was having sex with her, fantasizing about another woman. Hmm. Really, I'm serious. Well, that's good for you. I mean, good. that's good. Yeah. Wow. I just, I just, cheated. I just cheated. That's all. You know. <laughs> You said so if, a guy, if, if a guy's at the gym, time. what? If a guy's at the gym, if, he, if a guy's taking a shower at the gym, comes out of the shower, takes his robe off to change his clothes, and a girl walks in there by accident and <clears throat> trips, and her lips touch his genitalia, is that sex? Okay. Yes, <laughs> was that, was reaching that, just a little bit. Wait a minute, was that your excuse? <laughs> I tried is this it. Something it didn't can... work though. I think that's his that's fantasy. The, that's the plot of the Larry <laughs> David episode. Oh boy! I, I wonder if I wonder if uh, if uh, YouTube, when I put this up on YouTube, is going to demonetize this. They will totally. Oh, but yeah. tell them what happened to twenty twenty one, Alex. Oh, this What's is this is, this is just getting to me completely. Uh, I get a thing from YouTube. Uh, we're giving you a warning. Because your show had, was giving away erroneous information about you about uh, COVID. All right, and I'm thinking about this. Tell them what year it was. <laughs> 2021. 
I suddenly found a video I made in 2021. Well, by now, everybody would have gone with the misinformation. But the thing was, you know what the misinformation was? And I wrote them and I said, this was a misinformation. They said, well, we're not we're not going to uh, 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 agree with your appeal. Somebody on my show, I can't remember who, was talking no. about no, no, was talking about Fox TV and what they were saying about COVID. And then we, uh, he said, it's terrible for them to send across that kind of information. That's what they're holding against me. Quoting a Fox News thing. Huh? Yeah. Somebody quoted what Fox News did. What, what Fox News said and then said that was irresponsible. Yeah. They're yeah. saying I'm being irresponsible for putting that information over the air. What? Yeah. It makes no it's sense. Back up. I'm about ready to tell YouTube to yeah. fold it five ways and put it where the sun don't shine. Mm. You know, although I need them for the live broadcast. That's the only thing I really need them for. So, but whatever, you know. But anyway, so uh, let's see, we were talking about cheating. Um, <laughs> that was a good discussion. Yes, Paula. Has anybody seen the series The Diplomat? Yes. Yes. I loved it. What'd you think? Did we watch the whole thing? Yes, yeah. we did. We did? Yeah. We didn't like it. Really? I don't remember it. <laughs> you don't remember. It's a woman who becomes a diplomat and she goes. Oh, right, right, right. It was okay. Yeah. Just okay. I yeah. thought the script was great. I thought the acting was great. The characters. You know, were what we. Saw, I'll tell you what we saw the other day. If you get Apple Plus, you got to see this thing. We watched it and we didn't. We thought, okay, it's going to be interesting, but we didn't think we'd love it or anything like that. It's called Still, and it's Michael J. Fox's movie about himself. I, I, I want to get Apple TV it. just for that. Wait, what? It's it, I want it, to get Apple TV just for that. It is amazing. It's one of the best documentaries I've seen in years. Absolutely. You know, and it just is it, has, isn't it isn't it painful to watch though? No. He, he uses a lot of childhood photographs and early acting. And then they take clips from movies to kind Angel, of play, so it, it, play it out, you know. Growing up. And so on. They do show him in his current condition, but it's not they don't do it in a way that's that hard for you to watch. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's not like a whole body thing. It's basically his face. There is one shot of him walking down the street and falling down on the sidewalk. To well, show Diane Sawyer. I do that. On, on her little thing. Well, no, but Diane Sawyer. What, who interviewed him recently? Oh, you were talking about the thing on uh, uh, Sunday morning, CBS Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think they showed that scene there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it uh, it shows him falling down as, as he's walking down the, the street with his, with his trainer, basically his PT guy, and he falls on the sidewalk, and a woman helps him up and says, uh, "Oh," and, and he said, "Thank you very much," and she he said, "You you you knocked me off my feet." Oh. <laughs> 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 very sweet of Great. Line. Anyway, it's a great. It's a great documentary. It's fascinating. I'm going to get it tonight and watch it. Yeah, it's it a really was good. great. Yeah, um, Apple TV oddly enough does some pretty good stuff. They got this show Silo, which is good. Yeah, that looks good. I've seen yeah. the ads. No. Have you have you seen or just seen the ads for? Just the ads. Well, it, it's really very good. Yeah. It's really amazingly good. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. What else are we watching? Citadel. I can't. It's not grabbing me. It's okay. Did you like shrinking? Yes, loved it. Did you? Oh, awesome, awesome. What? How good was Harrison Ford in that? Amazing, amazing. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't get Marjorie to watch it. Oh, it's, wow! Beautiful. Yeah. What's it about? It's about a shrink. It's just about it's a shrink. shrink. Oh, it's about a shrink. I got yeah. it. It's about a shrink who needs shrinks. <laughs> Harrison Ford plays the shrink. He yeah. plays, yeah. plays a shrink. There's yeah. two of them. An office of shrinks. Yeah, it's an office of shrinks. And he is this, I had watched him in this thing, and I just said, I mean, I love him in, in, in 1923, I think is the show. I think he's quite good on that. But he's really good on this yes. show. Yeah, much better. Yeah, yeah. 
I never thought the guy could act, and he can act. He's especially if he's doing comedy. He he actually has great timing. Mm -hmm. so, you know what? A, so that's what we're watching. You know, Marjorie always says to me every day, "Here, here's what happens about seven o'clock at night." So what is there to watch? Like <laughs> I'm the gatekeeper on everything that's out there to watch. Did did you? What do you think of the latest season of Mrs. Maisel? Oh, I'm, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying it. It's, I'm not. It's I, hit and miss. Really? Yeah, it's yeah, hit and miss. I, I some shows I, are great. Some shows are bop. I, I think, think last year. I think the one with uh, where they did the roast. Uh, oh, that was awesome. Yeah, I just that saw that good. last night. Was that a was great good. episode. Yeah, that, that was the one I truly enjoyed. The that rest was about of Susie. Yeah, the rest of them, I'm going, there are just too many scenes here that don't move the plot forward. Yeah. You know, like, too fast for me anyway. And, and, and you kind of want it to move forward during a, a final season. You like to see it surge ahead, you know? And I figured that after they did that thing with Susie, they'd probably do another thing where she has lunch with Susie and they go back and look at all her life. Yeah. It was a kind of a shorthand for saying, here's what went on. Her husband went to prison, blah, 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 blah. We don't have any of that filled in. We have two more episodes. Let's see what they do with it, you know. But uh, uh, I, uh, you know, it, it, it it's not very, it's not very good this year. Have you seen Air yet? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we saw like that. It. We it, Unfortunately, we saw that after we watched the Michael J. Fox documentary. And while I liked Air... I just kept saying, well, it's not as good as what we just watched. Well, we watched something that was so incredible. Oh, really? Coming down and watching anything. But air was fine. It's good. Air was fine. I you liked know, it. I'd probably enjoy it more if I were into sports. You know, Marjorie liked it a lot more than I did because she, you know, lived through that. Yeah, I remember it. I remember the players. Yeah. But and I mean, uh, do you know what air is about? Uh, Albert, are you familiar with air? I would imagine it's about uh, Michael Jordan's contract with Nike. It, well, yeah. them, it's about them trying to get the contract with yeah. him. Well, they and, blew it with uh, with uh, Magic Johnson. Did they really? Well, or his deal was supposed to be uh, a, a better deal, but then they went with, with uh, Michael Jordan instead. Well, because it became the first deal that anybody made of this sort where mm -hmm. he got a percentage of every shoe sold. Right. Or any and, appar product. and apparently that was because his mother was a very bright lady. Yeah. yeah. She made the deal. She made the deal. And well, Magic Johnson turned down Nike initially. That's why he went with uh, he went with Converse instead. Yeah, but he and all those people didn't get like a percentage of sales. Michael was the first. Michael was the first. And then once he got that, I guess they went back to Converse and said, you want us to resign? You got to resign giving us a percentage but up until then none of these guys got a percentage of the sales opened up the door to everything in fact the head of nike phil knight was like kind of against it because he said we don't do that we don't give people a percentage of the shoes you know he said, well you better start doing it otherwise you're not getting this guy and uh i mean he's made a lot of money off that deal you know uh, but it's it's a good it's a good movie. I mean, it's it's fine. I love watching Matt Damon and Ben Affleck uh, interact. That was well, really fun. Yeah, but you know, my bad, Ben Affleck is not a very good actor. No, he's not. Damon's very good, but yeah. ben Affleck isn't. You know, uh, and the guy, whoever the guy was who played the agent uh, of, of, was was wonderful. I thought. Very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So there's uh there's Jeff. That's his son next to him. Andrew. Hi. Yeah. He, uh, he's the younger Hi. one, by the way, in case you don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh yeah. Uh, we, were, we were listening to a podcast about the Titanic this morning. Really? Yeah. Somebody finally discovered it happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I love the movie, right? Yeah. And I was telling that to someone and they said, oh, I just listened to this podcast about, you know, how much of the movie is real versus, you know, what's Hollywood and everything. And as far as, you know, the 
the business of how it sank and everything, it's pretty accurate. Oh, it's all Other pretty accurate. Almost there was a movie uh, earlier, a couple of years earlier, done by the British mm. called A Night to Remember. Mm -hmm. And it was the same thing. I mean, it was pretty much told. <laughs> it was a night accurate. to remember. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh then uh yeah, when you hit I iceberg like that, you know. Yeah. Um and uh let me see here. What uh yeah, the, yeah I, it, I, it was a, I liked the movie Titanic. I thought it was fine, you know. Mm -hmm. And as you say, I mean, most of it's true, but it's a pretty simple story of why they hit yeah. the iceberg. Yeah. I just meant the the business of, you know, how it sank and the science of all of that and the fact that, you know, the business people rushed the ship into production, wanted the ship to go faster than was responsible across the ocean at night because they wanted to arrive early to make headlines. And, you know, when they were going that fast, they couldn't steer the boat away. Oh, from also, the also, it, sort of it, supposedly it was unsinkable. Oh because yeah. What happened yeah. is they had all these compartments, and if let's say one of the compartments hit an iceberg and yeah. water started coming in, they could close that compartment off. And Which is true. Break. But, but it, it didn't work. They had six of these compartments, yeah. I think, yeah. or or they had more, but if if uh, four compartments filled up, the ship would stay afloat. But if another compartment fills up, then the ship's gonna sink. <laughs> so, probably yeah, sitting was, there going you know we should have thought maybe five or six instead of <laughs> and it, it was just sad because you know no one was expect no one was prepared for any sort of you know emergency as far as the crew were concerned so it was chaos they but were you, you know who died uh, one of the people who died on the titanic built this apartment house really, really? yeah yeah pastor Oh, John Jacob Astor. John Jacob yeah. Astor. The, the richest man on the ship. The, the, the richest man on the <laughs> ship. Yeah. 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 This was built by the Astors in, uh, in 1900. 1900. Yeah. He was 49, and his new wife at the time, who also I think went down with the ship, was 18 years old with the bun. Oh, oh, really? Scandal. I, I didn't know he was that young. I thought he was kind of an old fart. Yeah. Now, you know, the couple they always portray in the movies uh, is this couple where the husband won't let her go and wants her to go in the boat, but she won't. But she stays there and they yeah. both go down with the ship. Right. Yeah. And they're in bed together. Well, well, that was based on the Strausses, the Strauss mm. family. And if you don't know who the Strauss family is, the Strauss family, I believe, started Macy's. Uh, yes, that's correct. And and also their great grandson, a guy by the name of R. Peter Strauss, who was famous in my life because he was the owner of the radio station I worked at in New York, WMCA. Um, and um, so uh, they were very famous for being the family that you know went down on the Titanic. Rather than go down on him, that's uh, that's my old joke. <laughs> so we started. There goes your monetization. There goes our monetization. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, it it, it was really a you know um, a a major tragedy because there were other tragedies like that, but this one there were so many wealthy people who died. In the sinking of the Titanic, and they were. Did the San Francisco fire happen after, or before that? Oh, after, uh, before. Excuse before. me, nineteen oh six. I think Titanic yeah. was nineteen twelve. Yeah. So that was like a tragedy. Oh, too. The, the San Francisco earthquake still remains the largest and most damaging earthquake in the history of the United States. Really, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, and the thing was that it wasn't the earthquake that became the problem that, that caused San Francisco to get demolished. It was the fire. fire. Yeah, the, that's why I that said it. the San Francisco fire. I mean, I meant the earthquake, but the, I said the fire. When I was growing up, they referred to it as the San Francisco fire and earthquake. Yeah. You know, because it was the earthquake that broke the, the gas mains. And it was the gas mains that then caught fire that burned down the town. So, right. you know, it, it, it was it was a big deal. 
And uh, they would have probably never, I would have never had my neighborhood that I lived in in San Francisco if it hadn't been for the earthquake, because they took all the rubble from the earthquake and put it in the water in that part of town and made it landfill. And on the landfill, they held the 1916 Pan American Exposition. Mm -hmm. well, and then well, yeah. after the Pan American Exposition, they tore everything down except for the Palace of Fine Arts, which is that big round rotunda building you see every now and then in San Francisco. And then they built homes on the uh, on the land that had the Pan American Exposition. Mm -hmm. So that's where I lived when I was in San Francisco. That's cool. But well, you know what I'm talking about, right, Brian? Yes. Yeah. Just drove by it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I saw a documentary. <laughs> my, my building was shown in this documentary in 2290 North Point and showed this wonderful thing at the entrance where they had these angels kind of blowing trumpets or whatever, uh -huh. and sculpture that was on the front of the building. And do you know, I never noticed that when I lived there. I just, see it's my front door. I put the key in there. I'll look up and see what's up there. So. If you go to a lot of old cities, even like Sacramento and stuff like that, you look up and you see all the old original architecture on top of the buildings. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, but San Francisco was by the time of the Pan American Exposition, a whole rebuilt city. It's amazing how fast they rebuilt it. In fact, I was amazed how fast they rebuilt my neighborhood in the marina after the uh, earthquake in, uh, what was it, 1989? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was, we were back in business within a year. Wow. You know? And uh, then I got to go out there with, uh, with Albert, show him around, right? You came out. I remember that. Yeah. You told me the story of how the big fire hose building scared the hell out of you when you were. A oh, kid. you mean the, the Coit Tower? Right. Yeah, the Coit Tower. Tower. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I used to, I, I lived on Telegraph Hill and I had a bedroom on my own because I was a spoiled little kid and there were no other brothers and sisters. And I had my own room and out of my bedroom window every night, I could look out the window and up there was Coit Tower. And uh, which was built by Lily Hitchcock Coit to resemble the nozzle on a fire hose because she loved firemen. She used to like hang out with firemen. I think she used to like <laughs> to do more than just hang out with the firemen. <laughs> but she, um, um, but it was always there. And what happened was it was always dark at night because it was the war, World War II. Uh, no, not the Civil War. Okay. Uh, <laughs> war, and they had blackouts at night. They didn't light up the city or anything. So that, you know, so it never lit up. Well, I remember the day that it, right after the war, that all of a sudden I looked out the window and it was all lit up. You know, and I used to think Coit Tower is my friend. I used to talk to Coit Tower and I used to have dreams about Coit Tower uprooting itself and coming down to play with me. I was a warped little child. <laughs> Good memories. And then I studied Freud and realized why this thing was so interesting to me. You know, because it looks like a big giant penis. Um. Demonetization. A big giant penis in San Francisco, you know, but. Uh, and and you can take an elevator all the way to the top. You can. Absolutely. Have you ever been up there? Oh, several times. Really? I, I did it once. I mean, I lived there yeah. most of my life, but then I did it once. And uh, in yeah, the bottom, it's a spectacular. They, they got these great murals that were done during. Yeah. Uh, during the Depression and things. It was it's it's terrific building. Yeah. Um, anyway, you know, so it was it was really <clears throat> large in my life. But uh, anyway, so anybody have anything they want to talk about, Marjorie? No. <laughs> Alex, did, did you see the, the was the CNN thing about San Francisco? Was that last weekend? Oh, you know, was there, was a, there was a documentary they did with uh, Anderson Cooper about how the town has fallen apart. You could yeah, still get that, that last night. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll have to find it. We'll have, yeah, yeah, we'll have to go look for it, Marjorie. Yeah, I want, I want to see that. I mean, the marina area is still very nice. I mean, you have those soccer fields, and you have the kids' background is the Golden Gate Bridge. It's really cool. Uh, but then when you go downtown, your know, downtown's a real mess. Yeah, I, I hear, I, I hear the marina isn't a problem. Uh, yeah, marina is very beautiful still. So I take, I, I might just, I just took a friend to, uh, we went across Golden Gate Bridge and then to Fort Ord, which is underneath the the bridge, so you can right. see up upward. Fort Point. And all that Fort Point. Really right. Fort Point is under the bridge. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Fort Point. Fort Point. Yeah. And all that area is very beautiful still. You may not believe this. I used to drive ride my bicycle all the way out to Fort Point and back every day as exercise. Mm. I know Marjorie's yeah. going, yeah, I bet that's true. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. But it, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, that's where Kim Novak jumped into the water. Um, Jimmy Stewart went and fished her out in vertigo. But, uh, so, um, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I hear that, uh, for instance, Venice Avenue, which was like the fancy avenue, all the car yeah. dealerships were there and so on. Supposedly, that's tense now. It's like a tense city. Wow. I find that hard to believe, you know? Yeah, I don't go that way anymore. And why don't we do, you know, I, mean, I don't want to get political about this, but why don't we just do something about people that are poor? But you know, but you know what? Like Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Breed, who's the new mayor there, you know, she fought, she, she went on this big campaign, before, you know, trying to get to be a mayor saying, we're going to fight homelessness. We're going to do all this stuff. Now they had an interview with her last week and she says, oh, it's so frustrating trying to get something done and stuff like that. And I'm like, you had a plan. So we voted, you know, people voted for you as mayor and now you're in the position and now you say you can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's terrible. That's Sounds horrible. like our mayor. Mm -hmm. Oh, our mayor. So your mayor is at the disco. Mayor is terrible. Your, your mayor is at the club. No, no, our our, ma our mayor is at the Met. The Met. He's at the Met. The Met. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but fashion I, evening. Well, what he's done, we I've told you about this. We got these shacks outside of the restaurants, and it's not like they yep. they decided to make them pretty shacks. You know, a lot of them yeah. are just rat catchers, and they're even locked up. They don't even use them. They store stuff in them, and they're out on the street. They can't parking place. And the mayor says that's okay. Well, it was done as a reaction to North. It was done as a reaction, you know, to COVID and the fact that we wanted to keep these restaurants making money because not only for the people who own them, but also the people who work there. And that was fine. And that got us through COVID. But we're on the other side of that now, and they're getting free space to see people north beach is the same way north beach and i love north beach all the italian restaurants but mm -hmm. the same thing they have all these shacks in there with tables yeah and they keep them in there and it's it's really bad to park up there now and, and if you walk down the street and look at them there's nobody inside yeah then and, you, they and you're walking on the and you're walking on the sidewalk in between the restaurant and the shack and like yeah. the waiters are going back and forth and it's like uncomfortable to walk right in the middle like you're walking through a restaurant yeah yeah so i mean it, it's it but i i guess i forgot that probably happened in san francisco too and it probably happened in chicago and it probably is it happening in your part of the world paula a, a little bit but you know the the idea of outdoor cafes uh works in europe because it's, uh, you don't have traffic on the street i don't get the the romance i mean i know we had to do it during covid uh, it was a way of going to a restaurant but but the idea of sitting and and breathing the fumes and hearing and and, and hearing the traffic <laughs> I don't understand how why that's an attraction. It's not well, well, I mean, uh, for instance, this restaurant we go to has a has a shack out there, and they actually use it, and it looks pretty good. Uh, it's not a shack; they really did it up well. But they did it up well. But if they didn't do it, they still have a lot of stuff out on the sidewalk where they had tables. They always had tables. You know, the streets stuff. are very wide up there. And that's fine with me. I don't care if I, I have a little less room to walk down on a sidewalk. You know. That I don't mind. What I do mind is when they take up parking spaces and stuff like that, which impacts the neighborhood. And how is the ventilation when you sit in the shack? I mean, is that well, that's is that... the stupid part about it? They did these shacks because they said you can't, you they don't want you in the restaurant because right. it's enclosed 
And but unless the properly, if the air circulation isn't just right, you could get COVID. So, but you can build these shacks out there, and people can eat out there because that's outside. But the thing is, this the shacks were enclosed. People <laughs> are like uh, cheek to jowl, right? I mean, they're yeah. right next to each other. Yeah. And I'm the- going, boy, is this stupid? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, you know, if you had the top off of it and it were ventilated you know he didn't you know i would say okay you know that probably helps do you have any of these problems in your part of the neck of the woods scott because he's in plano texas no no we don't have any shacks no shacks <laughs> but you, how about you Charlie? it's too hot to eat outside in texas for one yeah, we've seen lots of uh outdoor dining and stuff during covid and air shacks and stuff yeah Tents. Are, they, are they still oh, there nice. are they still there I don't know because I don't get out anymore. So I. <laughs> Why don't you go out? You just don't like Texas any longer. I mean, <laughs> I I go out to go to the softball field, and that's bad, and that's about it. Yeah, because I mean, uh, uh, because we don't like Texas any longer, but that, that's because we're sitting here watching you people eat your own. You, you know what gets me? I don't know why. Our, now here's something our mayor should do. He should file suit against Governor Abbott in Texas for yep. putting these people on these buses and shipping them here. Sure. We, we, how many th- thousands do they say we have here now as a result of that? A yeah. lot. You know. And by the way, let me just just say something quick. I don't want to. I don't want to get political or anything like that. But do you notice what's happened now that Title Forty Two is gone? The amount of people trying to get in the country has just dropped precipitously. Yeah. This problem was caused by Donald Trump in Title 42. (laughs) I got to watch Fox, see what they say. Yeah, see what they're saying. Oh, oh, they're still too busy dealing with with, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Hunter Hunter Biden's uh, computer. Yeah. Dick pics. Huh? Dick, dick pics. Dick pics. Yeah. Did he have dick pics on there? Mm-hmm. I think so. I thought I heard that. Yeah. I don't know. Even in my even in my best days, and I was not unproud of that part of my anatomy. I don't think I would ever <laughs> shot dick pics and sent them to somebody. Well, there was no internet then. Yeah, right? you were- well, even if there was for me, I knew the internet. I could have taken them and posted them on my website for crying out loud. You know, it's way before in vogue these days, huh? It's much more in vogue these days. What is sending dick pics? <laughs> you know, I just I don't understand it. Who's the guy we had Anthony Weiner? Yeah. <laughs> he was appropriate Two time. name for that. Yes. No, but he sent. He them. loved he sending sent them. them. He sent them. He got in a lot of trouble for it. Yep. And then he kept kind of him. made his my mea copa. Oh, I'm sorry, and so on. For then he started running for mayor of New York, and it turned out he was leading in the race for the mayor of New York. And what does this moron do? He sends yeah. another dick pic, okay, and loses the race. <laughs> There's a really good documentary about that. I think it's called Wiener, and it's. It's such a bummer because he was he was a champion of the people and all of this, and he just threw his. He was actually head. he was actually very good when he was in Congress. He was he, amazing. He got up and made speeches, just railing against everybody and saying, "How can you do this?" and so on. And everybody he was my representative, and I, and I and I love the guy. Yeah, <laughs> but he did the same thing Bill Clinton did. He lied about it. Yeah, he, well, he shouldn't up. have done that. He should have said, "Yeah, I made a mistake." And, and did you and see who? He, you remember who he's married to? Uh-huh. Uma Abedin, mm-hmm. who was uh, 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 Hillary's Hillary's <laughs> aide de camp, and she was gorgeous. Oh yeah, right. Why, don't you, why don't you send her some dick pics? You know, <laughs> it, it just was amazing. Just amazing. It's amazing how all these people don't. You're right. I mean, you're right, Albert. They don't handle it correctly. The best way is to just walk into it, fess up to it, say you're sorry, it's a weakness you have or whatever, and get on with your life. It's inevitable they're going to get you, then tell the truth. Otherwise, don't say anything. 
Don't yeah, deny it. Don't you, say anything. You think when, when Bill Clinton was sitting in the Oval Office and uh, uh, this young girl, um, who I find attractive, I've always found her attractive. Uh, I do her, as they say in Boston. Uh, she um, uh, she wants to do something to you. And you're getting into middle age, okay? You're now going through your midlife crisis. And this girl is saying, hey, come on. And you don't sit there and think, you know, I could get caught for this. You just don't, I'm sure he didn't even think in those terms. You know, and, and it was pure circumstances that made it come, made it happen. You know, okay, I mean, it wasn't Bill's fault at all. You're no, right. I'm not You're saying right. it wasn't <laughs> Bill. Hey, she well, was hey, Bill. Alex, you made you brought up something that, and I'm just putting this out there because I always like kind of question why I thought this way. But I thought to myself, I bet you so many people have come on to Barack Obama, like when oh, he was oh, president. Oh, yeah. And for some reason, oh, I thought, and I just thought, can I just you thought imagine I being married? Wait, 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 let her finish. Let, let, let her finish. Michelle, oh. Michelle would let her, Marjorie. Let, be, um, no, I'm just for some reason, you know, because I thought he was very attractive. Like, I, you know, I found him attractive. He so, was, but he but, had Michelle right there. <laughs> I, I, I know. And so I'm just saying, for some reason, though, I thought to myself, I just can't see him doing like what bill clinton did i really feel like i don't think and michelle that, i don't have think like a real marriage there i don't think there even has been a hint of it no. no he couldn't he couldn't he was the first of well, have you seen her she'd just kill him oh, <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's no yeah, she's she has this whole thing where you know she's gone on these speaking engagements where she's talked about how she spent a lot of the time mad at it like you know marriage isn't perfect and how i was mad at him so Obviously, they weren't, they're not perfect, but I'm just saying they just seem like they have a real marriage. Like he, they definitely wouldn't cheat exactly. on each other. So. Exactly. Well, you know how I felt about Hillary and Bill? They were a good example to America in this respect. This happened to them and they got through it. They got through mm -hmm. to the other side. Yeah. They didn't break up because of it. You can right. imagine once he was no longer president, you go, goodbye, Bill. I'll see you later. I can't put up with this crap. But no, they're still together, you know, and they've had a long, enduring relationship. So yeah, and that was part of that was part of their relationship for forever, because uh, um, he, he had a string of, of uh, extramarital marital relationships before before Monica Lewinsky. And so was, it was not, it's not like Arkansas, it was an unknown Arkansas. thing. Arkansas. It was it was part of the deal. I think whatever, I think, I think, I think they had a deal, but part of that deal was don't ever get caught doing it. Yeah. When this Absolutely. Happened, and, and that was so that was part of the deal. And he broke that deal. Yeah, she may have been, had relationships. Obviously, nobody's ever come forward saying they have. But well, they, there did. were stories that she may have had yeah. relationships. Yeah. Who was that guy that committed suicide? Uh, 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 friend, yeah. Maybe rather. Yeah. Than, rather may, well, who? Who was it? Epstein. No, Charlie said uh, nothing. Vince Foster. Was the one Vince I Foster. Was that's it. They implied that she may have had a, an affair going with Vince Foster, but he wound up committing suicide, I guess, rather than have sex with her. But anyway. Now, Elle. I knew that was coming. <laughs> nice, hey, back in the 90s, I'd have done her. She looked good. Who? Um, uh, Hillary, back uh, in the 90s. Yeah, early on, I think Hillary was not oh. unattractive. Yeah. You know, or let's say not unsexy. I yeah. think this may That's maybe. true. I would never oh, ever. Marjorie Space, if I were you, Alex, I'd be real careful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, care, careful about what? <laughs> there was a great image when the whole thing started with Bill of Hillary um, and Bill with Chelsea in the middle holding hands. So the three of them were going to the helicopter, all holding hands, yeah. but walking with Chelsea in the middle. <laughs> Well, she, I think she, uh, Chelsea has talked about that particular picture and that it was her desire to get them together. And so this was a way of doing it. You know, she was mad at him. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I listen, I'm not a woman. I'd be pissed. Oh, yeah. You know, because what was, you, that, what was that movie about uh, uh, that I thought was from the book uh, about their relationship? It was uh, the movie was really well done. It was with the. I think Travolta played uh, played Clinton, 
and Emma uh, Thompson played Hillary. Anybody uh, remember the name? Yeah, what was that? I'm trying to remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember. I, I thought that was a real accurate, accurate picture of, of, of what the relationship must have been like. I think it was Dr. Zhivago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time. Boy, this is so much fun. I just love this show. I may get rid of the other three. <laughs> no, no really i'm serious i mean this i enjoy doing because it's no it's no stress on me uh you know and um and it, it just it's very satisfying and i have to thank you for it by the way anybody see the cute video i shot of ducks traveling yes yeah, that was is that not just adorable and i posted that on mother's day because you can tell it's mom in the front and it's dad in the back, you know. Yeah. Holding up the troops. Huh? Making sure they don't get out of line. Now, if people don't know what I'm talking about, go to my uh, my Facebook page, Facebook forward slash Alex A. Bennett. And uh, I at the very top, you have this little thing, the ducks, and it's sweet. <laughs> I also posted it over on um on uh, youtube but they'll probably demonetize me for, <laughs> for cute little ducks going across in the water anyway uh hey listen hey yeah it's always good to see you mandy you know it's it's good to see somebody hard at work <laughs> yeah. Somebody's gotta do it. uh charlene didn't say anything today so say something charlene okay i really enjoyed hearing everybody well, we enjoy having you here, okay. <laughs> whether you say something or not. Sometimes so. you it's fine. You know, it's great. Marjorie Miller, good having you here. I hope I see you soon. Um, uh, and and there's Jeff and his, his son. What is your name again? I forget it. Andrew. 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 Good Thanks having you having here me. today, Andrew. You know. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, Brian, you stayed with us the whole way. He's got a long drive home from work. Are you going home? Yeah. Brian? Yeah. 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 And Mandy signed off last week as I'm glad Brian didn't call. So I had to call today. <laughs> <laughs> we, her and I know why she didn't want me to call, but it's okay. Yeah. Oh, I just believe it's sexual tension. <laughs> no, no. No. But the story is something about that, but not with her and I. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to get into it. Uh, okay. 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 <laughs> And uh, and and Paula, always a pleasure seeing you here, darling. And glad your knee is feeling better. Thank you. You know, Marjorie's had knee problems too, but it was different. It was a different operation. Took her a while to get over it, just like it's taking her a long time to get over me. So I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> Albert, gee, it's you know, I really, yeah, I you can call anytime. This is terrific. I love having you here. I like being here. Yeah. yeah, call Mondays, Albert. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, available and, on here. Then Charlie Wallace, let's look at your T-shirt. What does it say? Uh, resistance is not futile. <laughs> it's voltage divided by current. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, Scott Boddicker. Bye, bye, Scott. Thank you. Always like having you here. Okay. And finally, now as always, it's our big sign off. What What are you saying, Albert? What are you pointing at me for? I'm pointing at Edgar. Edward. Oh, it, well, we're not always <laughs> together. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, it, let's. Uh, it's a time for Edward Berger to sign off by saying, "That's all, folks." Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. Bye. Have a good week.